Hello my charmed ones and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I wanted to film something really quick. I wanted to show you guys how I have my new Kate Spade like zip around planner set up with personal size inserts. If you guys follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you probably should at Miss Trenchcoat. But if you do follow me on Instagram, you probably would have seen at the beginning of September, I found this Kate Spade like zip around agenda cover at my local TJ Maxx and I got it for I think $40. So I got it as like a pretty good bargain. So I just had to pick it up. Um, I was kind of feeling in the mood to test out some smaller inserts. I really wanted to see how I felt about using my personal size Charmed Life Master Planner inserts. So once I had launched that whole set of my Master Planner inserts, for you know, all three sizes, full letter, half letter, and then the personal size, I was like, you know what, why don't you get a personal size planner, put your personal size inserts in here and try it out. So I have had so much fun actually like setting this guy up. It's been such a long time since I've been in like a, what I would consider to be like a really traditional binder. And of course inside of this is a six ring binder system. You know, right now, or I should say like before I set this up, I was using my Bound 2019 Charmed Life Master Planner. And before that, the last time I used any sort of binding was like last year in Disc Bound. So like I'm saying, like it's been a while since I've been in rings and I had so much fun like pulling out all of my old personal size like Filofax accessories and setting this guy up. So I wanted to show you guys inside of this planner. So stay tuned if you're interested in getting a little like how I've set it up and I'm gonna show you like, you know, how I've set it up so far in terms of like my month of September, which we're at the end of September now. So it's a little bit of like how I've been planning in it as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump in on this. But I did wanna show you before we get started, I'm wearing like this top that I absolutely love. It says, Drink coffee, put on some gangster wrap and handle it. Don't you love that? Oh my God, I got it on Amazon. I'm gonna link it down below for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into an overview of my planner. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see here, I have this Kate Spade zip around planner. I don't know what this is called. I think I have like actually a label for it inside here somewhere. Actually, I think I put it in here. Let's see if it has a name because I'm sure people are going to want to know. I don't think it's called the Wesley. I used to have like one of these types of planners like years ago, like I think in 2014 and it was called a Wes Wesley, but this one isn't. This is called Cameron Street, I guess, agenda. And it says that the original US value of it is 198. So I got a really good deal for 40 bucks on this planner. Okay, so undoubtedly, one of my favorite things about having a six ring binder like this, especially one that you can like zip around and has all of the different, you know, compartments and stuff is that you can kind of decorate the inside. And like I said, it's been a really long time since I've done any sort of like decorating of the inside of a planner. Um, but I did kind of go a little bit all out here, like pulling out some of my favorite like gem clips, which I know I get a lot of questions about these, or at least I did like back when I started making them. These are just like legit normal paper clips that I've taken like these gemstones that you can buy at um, like the supply store, like um, not office supply, but like the craft supply store, like Joann's or Michael's. You can sometimes buy like big packages of these like flat back gems that come in multiple colors. And I just like picked out gems that matched that were like pretty iridescent and they're like flat back. And I basically glued them together with this in the center, like the paper clip in the center. So that's all I do to make those. And it's so funny, I just said gemstones. Is anyone else watching that new TV show, The Righteous Gemstones? I think it's so funny. If you're not, you're missing out. I don't know. I think it's on one of the premium channels like HBO or something, but it's on like Sunday nights. It's so funny. Um, anywho, so I have some of my pretty like gemstone paper clips and my little like Chanel flower and the... Chanel ribbon one that I like DIY'd myself. You can find so many easy DIYs if you're looking to do like a ribbon one. And of course I put some of my like page flags. I even have this Starbucks card that was just like one of those things that people would just get from Starbucks so they could put it in their um, pockets of their planner because I think it's so pretty. And then I just have a regular little uh, sticky note pack here that's just kind of been like folded into one of the um one of the slots right so I can just put that in and out of this oh, too high up of the slots here and I have kind of like a place to put 
my notes actually was that that was the right one to put it in oh just put it in deeper okay there we go um and then here in my pocket on the side i just have a few other things just some stickers i don't remember where i got these probably michael's or joanne's or ac more or something like that and then i found this laminated task list i just liked that it was striped and i thought it would look cute kind of having the stripes poking out because the interior of this planner is stripes as well as you can tell, which is really cute and right up my alley. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone through, you know, the accoutrement over here, <laughs> let's go ahead and look at the actual inserts and how I've got the planner set up. So as a dashboard, I printed out this little graphic I have that says you're the editor of your life. This is from that productivity edit um, workbook and that video. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. And then I have another one of these laminated task lists. This is one of those like OG things that I pulled out of storage of like all my old personal size planner supplies. I think this was from the Target dollar spot. And for those of you who might not be aware, when you laminate something um, for your planner, you can write on it with a wet erase marker. And that's what I've done here. Um, of course, the other thing is too, is that I've got like, um, slits in a lot of these things. Actually, I have slits in like every insert here so I can easily pull it in and out of the rings uh, because that was something that I kind of was getting annoyed at going back to a six ring binder. And I'll show you guys a little bit later. But um, what I do have in here is my like Charmed Life Master Planner inserts. Um, and you can see here, I've got my month on two pages for September. And here, this will be a good example here to show you that all of my inserts are cut slits into it um, just so that I can remove them and add them. This makes it easier for me to like write in the smaller boxes of personal size because I don't have a problem with a personal size in terms of my handwriting. I can write pretty small naturally, but it is kind of hard when you've got the rings to like actually get in there and write things. So it's easier for me to just be able to pull out any of the inserts and write on them and then put them back in kind of the way you might do it with like a disc bound. So this is my month on two pages for September. You can see it's pretty well filled out. I don't have like a ton of stickers. I just have these two in there for now, which I kind of like. I kind of like that these inserts in the smaller size don't make me feel like I have so much white space that I need to put stickers in there, but I still can if I want to. Um, if you guys have ever seen any of my old planner setup videos before, you know that what I tend to use my month on two pages for is my editorial calendar for my blog and YouTube. So I write, I write down all of my blog posts and what days they're going out. And my YouTube videos, you'll see they're the ones with like the little kind of play sign button. And I switched the day that I am putting my videos out from like Sunday to Friday now. As you guys know, if you're watching this live, it's probably Friday, um, as long as everything goes according to plan with this video. Um, down here at the bottom on my monthly, I also do put in my monthly goals, right? So three things that I'm trying to achieve for the month. And let me see if I can, I don't know if this is like focusing or not, right? Let me see if I can bring it closer so you guys can just kind of see. But these are kind of like my three objectives for the month. And then here on the little notes section here that says this week, I allocate three tasks that I really need to get done that week. And that's a way that I can allocate and distribute my tasks. So I make sure that I'm getting everything done and everything that's priority is being done. You're also going to notice as we go through this planner that I do have my printable planner tabs that I'm using here. And what I've done in order to not overwhelm because there's lots of sections in this planner is I ended up going ahead and putting the monthly tabs up top and then like the sections down at the bottom. So after the monthly is my monthly task list. And on the right side is the monthly tracker. So the monthly tracker is something that like changed with my master planner this year. At one point it was an expense sheet and in last year's version, it was a habit tracker, but it's really hard to find a solution that number one is super flexible and number two, like can work for the widest variety of people. So what I ended up doing was creating this tra tracker and let me show you like a blank month here. Here's a blank monthly tracker so you can see what it looks like. This is a great design, I think, because although it's super simple, it gives me the ability to track numerous things if I want to. I could use this as a expense tracker. I could use this as like a bill tracker. I could use it as a habit tracker. I can use it to just list out information if I want to. There's so many ways I can use this because it's a really basic sort of chart design. Um, and I can create headings for myself up the top and track whatever I want, which is awesome. 
But for my purposes right now, the way I'm using this, as you might be able to see up here, it says like money manifesting. I am tracking all of the money that I make every day. Um, not all of the money from all of my income sources, because that would probably be really hard to calculate. But I am tracking all of my sales in the shop. And I'm also, so what I'm doing, what I've done here is I've added the days of the month down this left-hand column. Then I'm writing in, and this is what's blanked out because just for privacy sake, you guys, um, I'm, I've written down like the amount of money that's I've brought in total from the shop. And I have been using these columns to track other activities that are related to marketing. So in these columns, I have like a V on this first column for videos. So if a video went live that day, I check it off. Uh, B for blog post, an at symbol if I send in a marketing email, and then IG, and I'll check that column off if I do some sort of marketing Instagram, like a post or a story or something like that. And essentially what I'm doing here is a, manifesting money by tracking it, which is one of the best ways, I think, to manifest more money is really track your money. And I'm also kind of keeping track of the days that I'm doing marketing activities so that I can look back and see, oh, wow, I had a really great day, let's say, on the 6th from my income. Um, and I can see that like, oh, what did I do that day? Okay, that was a bad one to check off because literally nothing happened there. Um, but let's see, a day that has like everything checked off. Okay, it looks like most days only have like the most two things. But maybe like going through these trackers, I'll be able to learn that, okay, the days that I do blog posts and videos or blog posts on Instagram, like the days that I do more marketing activities tend to have higher sales or maybe the next day or maybe three days later happens to have higher sales. Whatever it is, I wanna track so I can see like, what the tendencies are for my sales so that I can do more of that, right? So I can get repeatable results. And one thing I'll let you guys in on is I'm filming this video on the 24th and it's gonna be going live, oh, I can't think, 25, 26, 20, 27th, I think is the Friday. Um, I have already made more money in the shop this month um, than any other month it, all year. So I think maybe, I'm trying to think like the more, it's not double, but it's quite possible that by the end of the month, like from my projections, that I would have made double in my shop this month in terms of income than I have any other month. And I really think that a big part of this has to do with this whole tracking my money and manifesting my money intentionally. So if you're interested in this topic of money manifestation, you're gonna wanna join me in October here on my channel. I'm doing a free live class on the topic of money manifestation. And let's go to October's monthly so I can tell you it's on the 18th. So 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm doing a live class on money manifestation, and this is going to be one of the strategies that I'll definitely share. So, okay, let's move on from this so we don't get too much held up. Okay, so then we get into my month, uh, my week on two pages, where I have just like um, the vertical sort of style with my top three. And I have a this week column where I can keep track of important tasks. And what I love about this is that I will say that there's like a lot of different inserts and things that I've seen where they do like a truncated vertical week on two pages. And for example, I have like a Kiki K planner that I just got that has something like not very similar, but kind of. And it is laid out with like I don't know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I love how it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So basically, throughout the week, I'm switching between both sides of the pages. And I don't know why, but for some reason, that really makes me really excited. So that it's not like one half of the week is on this side and one half of the week is on the other side. It's like I get to switch between both pages, if you know what I mean. Anyway, you can get a good idea here of like how I lay out my weeks. This was actually the day that I got the Kate Spade. You can see it says set up. Oh wait, did I buy it? No, no, I bought it on the third. Um, and so that was the day I set it up. So there really wasn't much here. You can see I'm using like minimal stickers, but I am using stickers still. And I'm someone who's not afraid to make sure that I write things down that I need to do and like scratch things out if things need to be changed. Like if I wrote something down here, I wrote down a project that I'm like, wait a minute, this is not the right week for that project. Eh. X that off and do something different. So I'm not afraid to like use my inserts, even something as small as these personal size. These really work for me actually because my day is less focused on timetables and more focused on tasks. So this layout actually really works for me very well. So yeah, I hope you guys can actually see this and like you can actually, I mean, kind of read my to do's. <laughs> it's okay if you do it. Nothing in here is like totally, totally secret right here in this area. But so yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of how I sort of lay out my days throughout the week and how I kind of plan on a task by task basis, as opposed to like a timetable basis. Um, and let's see, where's this was last week. 
you can see I'm starting to get like cleaner in terms of my planning. You can see like the first week of September was like a little crazy. As I go through, things are getting a little bit more organized. I'm making better use of my space and um, there's less things sort of, you know, checked off, like in terms of like scratched out. And then we'll come to this week where, yeah, I say that and then I did totally change a blog post this week. So I had to scratch it out with what the new idea was. And here you can see I'm actually marking my month again. This is like another one of these things that I just had. Um, one of these page markers, the clear page marker, and I put like washi tape on top and a sticker. And this marks off my current week. I also have on my current week this little reminder that I have kind of punched in here that just kind of shows like the three things that I try to do every day. So like every day I try to do something mindset related. Every day I meditate and every day I try to do something physical. If that's like working out, walking the dogs, or like even just doing self-care, these are like three non-negotiable tasks that I try to do every day. So I don't necessarily need to write them in. I just have this little reminder that kind of just stays there and, you know, flips through with me. Um, then we get to October and you can see actually here when I was pre-planning for October a little bit, I actually got excited and pulled out washi tape. I don't know who I am. Who am I? Miss Trenchcoat, who knows? Um, and I, I have also already started creating my monthly task list because, you know, this is the last week before October really starts. So I like to start getting that stuff in ahead of time. It helps me plan better when I give more thought to my whole pre-planning process. And you can see here, I also went ahead and just filled out this tracker for money manifestation. Again, I wrote in all of the days and, you know, the headings for what I'm tracking. And here you can see just like a blank week. Okay. So I've got the rest of the year here and I do have like certain things already, you know, anything that I already know about, I've put it in my planner and any goals that I know are going to be important are also in the planner too. Okay. So that is the calendar section of the planner. Then we get to important projects and this is my project tracker. So here, because I set this up in like September, obviously I didn't have like my full year of projects here. So what I ended up doing was marking this half to be like pre-planning for 2020 and then just using this for the rest of 2019. So a lot of things have really changed for me in terms of my plans. I, things have been a little bit up in the air for me, but I feel like I'm starting to get into my groove. And this is why I'm trying to do some more like planning really far ahead of time um, in order to really map out what it is that I want to do and have time to like gestate my plans because sometimes I make plans in the moment and if I didn't have enough time to like think about them then they change you know what I mean so um something like here like I was supposed to be working on my book July August and September and in previous videos you may have seen previous planning videos I was mentioning this but it just didn't get done. Like it wasn't, and it wasn't that it didn't get done, that there wasn't enough time for it. I didn't prioritize it like me. This is my fault that this didn't get done because I consciously chose other things and I'm not mad about that. I think I'm going to push this down into um, Q4 and try to work on it there. I think that'll make more sense for me because I really just needed this quarter to like really regroup. So for every month, I try to put like up to three objectives here for like short-term projects. And then those will end up being the objectives that go on my monthly plan. So like I said, a lot of things have changed, but I have been able to stick to some of the things that I was doing. And yes, I did fill in August just to help me when I started in September to feel like I was motivated and like had things that I had gotten done. Sometimes I think it is helpful to do things like that. So what I want to show you guys real quick, I don't want to show you all of my projects that I have laid out in here, but I will show you a few things. So one of the things that I want to do in October is I need to like do some major updates to my shop and my blog. And maybe not major, but there are some things that I've been neglecting doing because it means that I need to take the shop off offline for a little bit to install like new themes and to put some, you know, do some like HTML work on the back end for my blog and shop to look the way I want it to look. So I just have some, you know, things, some tasks that I want to work on kind of listed out here. Um, and one of the other projects that's going to start in October is this idea of this 2020 prep and pre-plan. Again, I'm trying to plan things out a little bit further in advance so I can let those ideas really like ruminate and marinate in my mind. So I know like if January 1st getting started, I really want to continue with them. So I've just kind of put out some tasks that I want to do, some things that I want to do ahead of time for pre-planning, like laying out content, considering some new email sequence ideas. Um, coming up with blog posts, YouTube videos, lead magnets, Instagram posts, new products, you know, laying those sorts of things out for the year in advance to see if I really, if that's really the plan that I want to go with. 
Um, and then I also want to do a holiday sale, obviously like Black Friday, holiday, Christmas things for November. And I have just a few things listed here. When I get closer to like the month of November, I will probably go in and fill this out way more and make notes. But usually when I am setting up my project section in like a new planner and I know there's something, I kind of put just a few things in just to help me. Um, get organized. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you in my project section. Oh, let me show you. I don't know if I have one that's blank. Yeah, back here you can see this is what a blank project plan looks at, looks like. Okay, and then we come to my brain dump. Again, I'm not going to show you a ton of these brain dump sheets, but for example, this brain dump sheet here was like I was using it to collect blog posts. So I will like list out titles or ideas here. I even have like a lot of times I get ideas and I put them on sticky notes and I'll just like collect them all in here just to have that like in one place. So that's one I can show you. And let me go ahead and show you a blank. So here's like a blank brain brain dump. I love doing these. I try to do a brain dump every month before I get into my real deep planning just so I get everything out of my mind so I don't forget about anything that might need to apply. And then I use the Eisenhower matrix to like decide what's actually important and what's urgent. Um, here in my brainstorm section, you guys have seen like a little bit of how I use this for my business planning. So again, I've started my Q4 business planning ahead of time a little bit and just kind of laid some information out. And oh, the other project, you know, pre-planned project that I'm doing right now is a closet upgrade. So I need to like upgrade the closet in my bedroom. It really is like poorly organized. So I'm going to get one of those Ikea pack systems. And basically I went through and like did measurements and just started like laying things out like this. I know this doesn't look very high tech or anything, but this is like the layout for what the sections of the pack system will look like in my closet. So this is just a way for me to literally create like a mind map or a pre-plan that then I could then turn into a project plan. Or for something like this, I probably won't need to necessarily turn it into a project plan. This will probably be enough. I can just add tasks here and go for it because this is, you know, it's kind of like a minimal thing. Like I know what pieces I need to buy. I just need to go to Ikea, buy them, and then rip up my old closet and start building a new one essentially. So there's not like a lot of individual tasks that I feel like I need to track for that. And then, of course, I have my notes section in the back. I do have some like maybe sensitive things in there, but what I could show you is the first note I have is my ideal day. So I just kind of like wrote out like if my day was going to go according to plan, what would that plan be? Right. So this is kind of just like inspiration to keep me on track for me to, you know, manifest for me to see that I do have time in my day for everything that I want to do. And then at the end, I have my index. And at the very end of this planner, I have some more goodies. Um, I have this really cool laminated to-do list that I think this was like, maybe, I think this was from a Garant Doré note set. Um, and so I have this laminated so I can write on it. And then I also went ahead and printed out my CEO strategy day form and laminated that so I can just fill this in. And this is from like the last one that I did. But if you're interested in this, I can leave you a link down below to the video where I talk about this and you can get this. And then in the back, I just left a few of the sections for from Kate Spade, um, like notes and to do's. And I'm just kind of using this for like additional sort of journaling and ideas. So I'm just going to leave that. So I think you guys can here. I'll show you the pages if you want, um, like these notes and doodles. I just don't like to waste. I hate wasting. And then these little to do. So I'm just kind of making lists and stuff in here. And in the back, I found, oh, here we go. Some more, I just had some more things that I wanted to fill this up with. Some more of these sheets from that note set. And I have this world, I don't know where, I must have, this is so long ago. I have this world map, I just thought it was pretty. I wanted to keep it back there to kind of be a page lifter in the back. And then I have some more little things here. My, um, these are the, uh, like the yearly overviews, I just printed these out and I was kind of keeping track of things in here, but I'm not really using these so much. In the 2020 editions of this planner, these things are actually built in, so I won't be making these individuals as freebies anymore, I don't think. And then um, this thing in the back is just a folder that I had and I was thinking about setting it up, but I didn't do anything, so I'm just leaving it in the back there, so there's nothing really to show there. Um, the last thing that I guess I wanna talk to you guys about real quick that I do wanna talk to you guys about is this pen that I've been using. This is called True Red is the brand and I got it at Staples. It is like a gel pen and it's a 0.5 nib, so it writes really finely. But what I really like about this is I usually am someone who has a problem with gel ink and I'm not having a problem with this. Like you guys may know if you've been following me for a while that I love when the ink in my planner is like rich, rich black and gel is supposed to do that. But for one reason or another, I just never get the gel pens that work. Um, so I 
found this, I tried it out and it actually works and I love it. And because it's such a fine nib, I can write very small and very intentionally and very cleanly in a smaller planner like this. So it's actually working out really well. Plus I love that it's like matte black and it's like a soft touch. So that's the pen I'm using from Staples True Red. Um, so yeah, that is everything inside of this little planner. I have been loving it, but let me jump back into a face-to-face -face and we'll close this video out properly. Okay, so that was everything inside of my personal size Kate Spade planner, this little six ring binder that I've been using for the month of September. And I'm gonna, I think I'm probably gonna stay in it for a little while. Like I may use this for the rest of the year. I'm still not sure what my planner setup is going to be for 2020 at the moment because I have a lot of options. This is like the problem with being someone who designs planner inserts, right? And planners is that I don't know which one of my systems I necessarily want to use for next year. So I do have some time, I feel like, until I have to choose. And for now, I want to test out this personal size and see how it's working for me. It is working for me very well right now. Um, so who knows? This could be a contender for 2020, but you will find out, I guess, in December. When in December? There's a day in December. Mark this on your planners, you guys. Uh, on Friday, December 13th at 1 p.m., we're doing a live planner setup. So I'm going to be setting up my planner system, whatever that system is, for 2020, and you can join me as well. So we've got a lot of fun things to do this this fall, you guys, me and you together. So I definitely want to make sure that if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Like I said, I will leave some links down below for you to where you can get some different things that are in here, including the Charmed Life Master Planner in the digital bundle if you want to try out the personal size and also get it bundled in with all three sizes of the planner, which are super helpful. So yeah, that is about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what your favorite part of this planner setup was by leaving me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye bye.